Hi, welcome to Speak Japanese Naturally. I'm Fumi. I normally teach Japanese here in YouTube, but today I'm gonna react to 12 things not to do in Japan by abroad in Japan. As a Japanese teacher and a mother of three, I will tell you what I would say to my kids or students. Alright? Okay, so now let's watch. So walking down the street whilst eating and drinking isn't illegal. You're not going to get shouted at uh, and you're not going to get arrested by ace detective Sherlock Bones. But what you will get is the stare of disapproval. A lot of people don't know this one until you get here and never see anyone mm. doing it. What you'll find is if someone wants to eat or drink something quickly outside, they'll buy it at the convenience store and then eat it or drink it out the front. Same with vending machines. If they buy something from the vending machine, they'll drink it there and then next to the vending machine. The main reason is people are very conscious about keeping the streets clean here and you don't want to ruin someone else's day by having them walk through your spilt coffee. That said, all you need to do to avoid the stare of disapproval is uh, just stop and eat and drink whatever it is there and then. Maybe it's on a bench maybe you're just standing at the side of the road whatever just don't walk whilst eating and drinking and you'll be alright mm. okay so what he said is true I think um, you can eat in front of a convenience store but usually not on the street while walking I don't see anyone eating while walking around here but I think drinking water or soda is fine because it's really hot in the summer here so you will die if you don't drink anything Oh, but please be careful with the alcohol. It's not illegal to drink alcohol on the street, but I don't want someone who drinks alcohol on the street getting closer to my children. But you know, if you go to Tokyo or Osaka or those big cities, uh, there are places that you can find a lot of food stalls along the street. Of course, it's okay to eat and drink while walking in those places. Just look around. And if Japanese people are eating while walking, then you can do it. Three things to point out here. Number one, mm. never put your chopsticks upright into the rice, mm. as this is part of a ritual conducted at funerals when offering rice to the spirits of the deceased. Similarly, number two, never pass things uh, from chopstick to chopstick, because again, this is done during funerals uh, to pass the bones of cremated relatives. Mm. So that kind of imagery doesn't go down well mm. over dinner, as you'd expect. Probably best not to conjure up imagery surrounding death before before you've even had your lunch. Oh, and thirdly, don't. Okay, so don't do these things that he said. These are considered to be bad luck. You place chopsticks on a chopstick rest or on your plate horizontally. Then okay, okay? Do the rubbing of the chopsticks. You know when you open wooden chopsticks and you like to do that to uh, get rid of the splinters and just because it's fun. Everyone loves doing that, right? But don't do it in Japan because mm. it's seen as rude to the owner because you're basically saying, oh, your chopsticks are probably cheap, uh, which, let's face it, they probably are, but in fact they usually... Okay, I think I've seen some people doing this, and actually it's okay, but if my kids do that, I would say, oh, don't do that, because it doesn't look good. I don't think it's rude to the owner of the restaurant, but if you want to look sophisticated, it's better not to do that. <clears throat> Probably the greatest thing about Japan ever and the reason that I eat out several times a week just because I save 20% automatically. In Japan it's believed that customer service should always be exceptional with staff giving 120% every time. 120%? 110%, 120% would be ridiculous. But it's not necessarily rude to tip someone, it just creates this awkward situation where the worker, the staff would feel like you're assessing their performance and they could potentially lose face. So you might think you're being nice by giving someone a tip, but you're not. You're just creating an uncomfortable situation for the worker and they'll probably just reject your tip outright. Uh, so don't be tempted to do it. Uh, okay, I've never given any tip at a restaurant, but the situation was strange. Usually we don't pay at the table. We take the bill to the cashier and pay there before leaving the restaurant. So if you put money on the table 
and leave the restaurant. They think you just forgot your money on the table and left it on the table. And there's no timing to give them any tip. If you want to know how to pay at a restaurant in Japan, please watch this video. Anyway, you don't normally give any tips at a restaurant. They are included in the price. But on other occasions, I've been paid a tip and I've given tips in Japan. When I was 20 or so, I temporarily worked a very famous hotel in Tokyo. One day I was told to deliver room service to a room and the man who ordered it gave me a thousand yen bill. I was thrilled to get a tip because at that time my wage was about 1500 yen per hour. So a thousand yen was huge. Later I heard that. The man was a TV director or something and he was with his mistress. Anyway, if you want to give a tip at a hotel, it's okay, especially if it's a high standard hotel or very expensive onsen ryokan. Just never give them coins. Tips have to be paid with bills. And when I take a taxi, I sometimes give the drivers a tip. For example, it costs about 900 yen from the station to my house. So I hand the driver a thousand yen bill and say, Otsuri wa kekkou desu. Sukunai desu kedo. The meaning is, I don't need the change. It's a small amount though. It's really a tiny amount, but no drivers have declined so far and they seem too happy to hear that. Of course, you don't have to give them tips, but that's why they'll be delighted to get tips. There's a real emphasis on being mindful when you're using public transport in Japan uh, that's often completely absent in many countries. Numerous of the times that I've been riding a train in the UK and someone nearby has been screaming at their partner down the phone and I felt like I was part of the argument, like some kind of unpleasant 4D experience. But given Japan's density, it's especially important to be mindful when you're stuffed in a train alongside fellow commuters, many of whom are sleeping as well. With that in mind, don't ever, ever talk on your phone on the train. That's a massive like no thing to do here and uh, even talking loudly is looked down upon if you're on a local train or a subway train and you get a phone call just ignore it until you get off and if you're on a bullet train uh, you can go to the little compartment in between the carriages and take your call there you can't do that on a train you can say meaning I'm sorry I'm on the train right now I'll call you back later you don't usually talk on the phone at the cafe or at a restaurant either. I remember for the first few years that I lived here, whenever someone handed me a business card, I was utterly terrified oh, because until then, business cards to me had always just been a bit of paper, a bit of card with some writing on. But in Japan, they are so much more. Once you've exchanged business cards, the trick is to imagine you've just been handed the lost treasure of El Salvador or something. First, study it meticulously, the name, the job position, the details. Uh, and then either put it in your business card holder or just put it on the desk if you're at a business meeting. Just put it on the table. Never play around with business cards or put them in your back pocket because they're seen as a physical extension of the person themselves. And you don't want to stuff somebody's physical extension down your back pocket. If you're doing business in Japan, always, always carry mm. business cards. You don't want to be that awkward foreigner who stood there writing out their name and number 50 times in one hour on the back of a tissue. And for the record, I am usually that awkward foreigner uh, scribbling down my details because I do forget to bring them. And subsequently, I hate myself when it happens. Now I remember when I started to work in for a company, uh, right after I graduated from university, I bought a book about business manners. I was so nervous too, as he was. Those business cards are very important. It was written in the book too. So what I do is to study the business card carefully and say, ah, Like your kanji is nice or, oh, I like your design or something. So for example, you know, can you see, this is, this is my uh, card. 
and it has a small illustration here, and it has color here. Can you see? So people who get this usually say, "Oh, it's beautiful," or oh, "This illustration is so cute," or something. When someone gives you the business card, you say, "Chōdai itashimasu." I humbly accept and put this card on the table during the meeting. Okay, next one. Mm. If you've got a runny nose, standard procedure here is just to keep sniffing or just to find a toilet or a broom cupboard to hide in. Blowing noses in public is pretty rude. Interestingly though, handkerchiefs are pretty popular here. Not in the way you would think though. People use them to wipe sweat off in the hot summer weather uh, or even more commonly to dry their hands in public toilets. Because surprisingly, many public toilets in Japan don't have any hand drying facilities despite having space age toilets that reside in the same room. It's quite a weird contrast. Wait for a minute. Understand. The public restrooms I've been to usually have hand dryers. Right now uh, we can't use it because of the coronavirus, but usually those public restrooms have hand dryers or papers. Anyway, if my kids are keeping sniffing, I would say blow your nose. But as for me, I'm embarrassed to I'm embarrassed to blow my nose in front of people. So I turn around and try to hide what I'm doing. But it's okay, it's not rude. Oh, but don't use your handkerchief to blow your nose. That seems very disgusting to Japanese people. Physical contact in Japan isn't really a thing. You'll bow a lot, you'll nod enthusiastically daily, mm. uh, but occasionally you might shake hands with someone if they're a good friend or uh, a business client that you get on well with, but generally I avoid it unless someone makes the first move. And hugging in particular doesn't go down well, it's just met with expressions of awkwardness and despair. And also amongst couples, public displays of affection are phenomenally rare here, so uh, don't be surprised if you get the stare of disapproval if you're kissing your partner frantically in the street. Yeah, I don't hug or shake hands with any Japanese people. Even if the person is a good friend of mine, it's awkward. So, like he said, it's better to wait what the other person does. I think that it should definitely be this. If you're the sort of person who feels the need to have a debate or an argument about things or throw your opinions out there constantly, people will find you obnoxious and dislikable and uh, probably just avoid you. Embedded heavily within the culture is this idea of keeping harmony um, and avoiding conflict at all costs. And it's a lot easier to do that when people aren't at each other's throats throwing around opinions. Sometimes it can be frustrating when people are just unwilling to speak their minds or give you a clear yes or no answer. I mean, one time, one of my colleagues when I was teaching I asked him, do you have any pets? And he said to me, maybe my cat is dead. <laughs> maybe your cat is dead. What, what does that mean? It's, is it is dead or is it not dead? It's not Schrodinger's cat, is it? It turned out the cat was definitely dead, but he was just the sort of person that always liked to use the word maybe and just not express certainty. Uh, but if there's one reason I've never seen a fight anywhere um, in Japan mm. in the last five years, it's probably this reason, that people are a lot more careful about expressing their opinions and holding back what they really think. I wouldn't say maybe my cat is dead, but the kind of same thing happened to me yesterday. My husband and I went to a shop and bought some wooden plates three days ago. and. Yesterday, I found that one of them has a crack. So I, I asked my husband if he had a receipt from the shop because he's the one who paid. And he said, maybe I threw it away. But he didn't seem to try to find the receipt. So I asked him again, so you are certain that you threw away, not maybe? And he said, yes. So he didn't want to give me the straight negative answer. I had to clarify if he has it or not. I totally understand. We use tabun maybe a lot to weaken the meaning. So we try to avoid conflict. We even try not to give our opinion. So if you go to teacher parent meeting at school, nobody speaks up unless they are called up by name to give their opinion. I'm one of them. I try not to say anything. My bad. Okay. 
Ow. Yeah, I could be bothered to film that one. Uh, everyone seems to know this one already anyway. When visiting someone's house or entering a public building like a school or going to a hot spring, you take off your shoes and switch to slippers before you go in. The easiest way of knowing if you have to change your shoes is there'll be a change in elevation in the floor. So when you go in, there'll be a little stair and that's when you mm. know. This is the one thing on the list where failing to stick to the rules will have noticeable results. A few years ago, a friend and I visited a public bathhouse in Kyoto and we went in and you're supposed to take your shoes off. For some reason he didn't. I don't know why, I don't think he noticed or saw. There was a little old woman sitting behind the entrance counter where you kind of pay. And uh, when we walked in, she saw that he still had his shoes on and she shot up with terrifying energy and ran over and grabbed him and took him to the front and was like, get your shoes off, get your shoes off. And that image has stayed burnt into my mind. This quiet little old woman suddenly becoming so alive and animated by this terrible event. And ever since then, I've never forgotten to uh, take my shoes off when entering a building. Yeah, of course, you have to take your shoes off when you enter somewhere. I don't want anyone to come into my house with their shoes on. It's dirty, so I have to clean the floor. I feel like I'm insulted or something. Take off your shoes. For whatever reason, rubbish bins and trash cans are disturbingly rare in Japan. Uh, outside of convenience stores, it can be a nightmare to find one. And the reason I put this on the list is because so many people, uh, so many of you guys, message me on Twitter saying, I'm in Tokyo and I can't find a bin, what should I do? I've wandered through Tokyo for up to 20 minutes sometimes, just in search of a bin and can't find one. The streets though, despite that, are shockingly clean here because people, if they can't find a bin, they just take the rubbish home with them. It can feel like some kind of mini game sometimes going in search for a bin because when you do find a bin you feel a real sense of achievement but uh, despite that don't be tempted to litter just keep trying and you'll find a bin one day the reason that there are almost no trash bins in japan goes back to 1995 there was a cult group and they placed deadly gas called sarin to attack people in the subway in Tokyo many died and a lot more people were injured and after that the government removed trash bins from public areas because they thought those trash bins could hide deadly things inside but that's the reason so for me it's okay that there are no trash bins and you never throw litter on the street your character might be questioned it's your litter so you have to be responsible for it just take it back home or to your hotel room or if it's litter from a food stand where you bought it you just go back there and ask them to throw it away for you usually they accept doing that Seems like a fairly obvious addition to the list and yet in the UK we just cross the street whenever the hell we want, whenever there's an opening in traffic uh, as opposed to waiting for the green mm. light, same as many countries. In Japan however, people do not cross the road on a red light, it's incredibly rare and it's one of the greatest ways of seeing this sense of order and obedience to the law that exists in Japan. If you stand at a roadside in Japan and there's no cars coming, you can't see any cars whatsoever, people still will not cross mm. the road until it goes green. Over the years of the many friends I've had come to visit me here, this is the thing that shocks them the most. The idea of not crossing the street when there's no visible cars there, the idea of abiding by a rule that doesn't seem necessary. And yet for me personally, the main reason I abide by it is after a few years of being here, you don't want to stand out. You don't want to be this stereotypical rule-breaking foreigner. And as well as that, you don't want to run the risk of getting caught out by the police. So those are two things worth taking into consideration before you dash across the seemingly empty road. And the last one. Well, I say to my children, uh, don't ignore our traffic light. But actually, when I'm not with my kids or there are no kids around, I sometimes ignore a traffic light. I mean, I don't ignore a traffic light. I don't feel comfortable doing that uh, because I'm Japanese. I just cross the road where there isn't a traffic light. Don't worry about not knowing anything about Japanese etiquette when you come to Japan. No.
as, as I said earlier in this video, there aren't going to be any real consequences to not following any of these mm. things, apart from maybe the footwear one. That's that's quite scary. You don't want to get dragged off by an old woman. The reason I say don't worry too much is because I find a lot of people come here and they're very nervous and very anxious about following the etiquette, etiquette they don't really comprehend. Mm. And that includes even me when I came here. I didn't know anything. And I was constantly anxious and nervous that I was making mistakes. But really, as a foreigner in Japan, you get kind of a, a free pass to make mistakes. People are understanding and they're kind and they will let you off. So don't become too nervous about following all the rules. Do your best, but don't become a nervous wreck. So those are my 12 things not to do in Japan. Yeah, that's true. I think everyone agrees with this. If I go to a foreign country, I might do something that offends people there, even if I don't want to. So don't worry too much, that's for sure. Pam, but what have I missed out? Let us know in the comments section below. I've probably missed out. Don't ever be late. And <laughs> Wait for a minute, yeah. This don't be late thing, I have to say that to myself. Older people are really keen on time. Five or six years ago when I moved in this house, a neighbor called me. He accused me of not being at the local association meeting, saying everyone else had already arrived. But it was five minutes before the actual meeting time. He sounded annoyed, but I was annoyed. I was like, kite na yo. Like nobody told me that rule. Of course, I didn't say that. But after that, I tried to arrive five minutes before meetings with neighbors. I've learned. Don't enter a bath or a hot spring without having a shower first. Those are the problem. Yeah, that's so true. So you have to wash yourself from top to bottom before getting into bathtub. But would you like to go to a public bath or onsen in Japan? I'm not that fond of the place because you have to be completely naked there. I can enjoy myself when I'm alone, but if I go there with someone I know, I get self-conscious. So for me, it's better to go those places alone. Uh, bonus, bonus stuff there. It's Christmas, so you get extra, extra content. Happy Christmas. So is this Christmas? The happy new dawn. You and me did it one, but all the area. <laughs> Anyway, that's all for from the video. I really enjoyed this video. Thank you Abroad in Japan for making this interesting video. It inspired me and made me want to react. And thank you Janet for always supporting me. And thank you all for watching this video. As I said before, I normally teach Japanese with pitch accent. So if you're interested in learning Japanese, please visit my channel and subscribe to it. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please write them in the comment box below. Thank you again for watching this video and hope to see you again. Bye!